Hello, mathophiles. This episode of Adventures in Algebra, we are going to study the general linear group. And we're going to start the process of showing that it is a group. This is going to be a video in two parts. Now, of course, it's not clear what this means right now, but it's the set of two by two matrices with non-zero determinant. So, quite literally, GL2R is the set of two by two matrices, so A, B, C, D. These are real numbers, and our one restriction is that the determinant is non-zero. And for two by two matrices, the determinant is just A, D minus B, C. So product of the diagonal entries minus the product of the off-diagonal entries. And it is worth noting that there's a notion of determinant for arbitrary n by n matrices, and this is not the formula in the general case. So just pointing that out, because you can also prove that arbitrary n by n matrices with non-zero determinant form a group. Now, to make some of the notation easier for a lot of the proofs, for a matrix A, we're going to write it in this form. A sub 1, 1, A sub 1, 2, A sub 2, 1, A sub 2, 2. You might remember this from linear algebra. A sub i, j is the entry in the ith row and jth column. So this is just part of that notation, just in the special case of 2 by 2 matrices. And the reason for using this notation is that we're going to be computing products of multiple matrices and we need to have an ability to work with them because if you want three matrices if I were to use this approach I would need 12 variables and with this approach I only need three variables the variable names for the three matrices all right and other distinctions I've known from having taught this course before it's worth pointing out this is a set, and so a matrix is an element of this set. The matrix is not equal to the set. There is a distinction here. So this is part of the reason we invented set theory in the first place. It wasn't so that we could work with sets of numbers, it's so that we could work with sets of anything. And in this case, the set we are working with is the set of all matrices with this restriction. Okay, so now that that clarification has been made, here is the definition of multiplication of matrices. You multiply the first row of the first matrix times the first column of the second matrix. And that is the upper left corner of the product of the two matrices. And you see that in each of these cases, the next entry is the first row times the second column first row of the first matrix times the second column of the second matrix, and so on and so forth. The lower left-hand corner is the second row of the first matrix times the first row of the second matrix. I might as well just put in the formula in general, A times B I J. If you might remember, it's the summation Overall, k goes from 1 to n. I was going to use blue here. Color coding. Because I should mention, what do I mean by multiplying a row by a column? You're taking a dot product. So in other words, you're multiplying every entry in the ith row of the first matrix times every entry in the jth row of the second matrix, term by term. So first entry times first entry, second entry times second entry, and so on, and adding them all up. And this gives you the entry in that matrix. And so this is the general formula, and you've already probably seen it in linear algebra, although we often focus on examples, and I will in a moment here as well, but we do need the general formula for what we're doing, doing in this course. So here's my one example, the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4 times the matrix 5, 6, 7, 8. It's the first row times first column, 1 times 5, 2 times 7. First row times second column, I see a 1 and a 2, 
and a 6 and an 8. And then down here in the second row of my product matrix, I need to multiply the second row of my first matrix. So second row is 3, 4. So 3, 4 times 5, 7. And 3, 4 times 6, 8. And so 3, 4 times 5, 7 is 3 times 5 plus 4 times 7. And so this is the results. And you can compute that this is the matrix you get. So first row times first column, 1 times 5 plus 2 times 7, and so on and so forth. Now I've mentioned before that normally when you define groups we don't check closure, but this is one case where we have to because, well, if you assume A and B have non-zero determinant, you need to check that A times B has non-zero determinant in order to guarantee that the product of the two matrices is still in the set. Because remember, our set is invertible matri or matrices with non-zero determinant. So we need to check that. So let's compute this determinant of this product. Well, the diagonal terms are the, are the product of these two numbers, a11, b11, a12, b21, and a21, b12, a22, b22, minus the product of the anti-diagonal terms. Well, Math is fun, so let's FOIL it out the first term. If you FOIL out the first term, this is what you're going to get. A11B11 times A21B12 is this expression. To make things a little easier on myself, I on each factor I group the A terms together and the B terms together. And you'll see that in each case, there's two terms from the matrix A and two terms from the matrix B. You also notice that because of this minus sign, all the terms down here are negative and all the terms up here are positive. So we assume I did this correctly. And then we look for patterns. Well, we see that these first terms actually cancel. And then we see A11, A22 is a common factor on this second column here. And A12, A21 is a common factor in this second column here. That's kind of neat. Finally, we see that these last terms also cancel. So after doing the cancellations and factoring out those common factors, we get this expression. So, so far, the determinant of this product of matrices factors like this. Hmm. Oh, look, this is the determinant of the matrix B. B11, B22, these are the diagonal entries, and these are the anti-diagonal entries. And same here. And, oh, this is a common factor in both expressions, sort of. There's one little hiccup. It has the opposite sign over here. We're subtracting off the B11, B22. But there's a way around that. You can just pull out a negative. And now you see that there's actually a common factor of B, determinant of B. And that's what we will use. And so up to this minus sign trick, we have a common factor determinant of B. What do we have left? Oh yeah, it's the determinant of A. And so, long tedious calculation, what do we discover? The determinant of the product of matrices is the product of the determinants, which is a fact we actually state in linear algebra. But now you at least see the proof in the 2 by 2 case. More importantly, if we're assuming that the determinant of A and B are both not zero, their product can't be zero. And therefore, the product of these two matrices has a non-zero determinant. So in fact, like we wanted, if A and B are in GL2, so is their product. So we do actually have closure. 
However, it's worth pointing out that we've proven this other theorem here that might be useful in other contexts, so I will point it out. The product, the determinant of the product is the product of the determinants.